Hi folks, this is Miss Rich and today we are going to do a STEM activity on Rosie Revere Engineer. Anybody who knows Miss Rich knows that we love to learn new things about science and sometimes we try something and it doesn't always work out the way we wanted to, but it can still be fun and we can learn what else to try. So let's watch a little video about the book Rosie Revere Engineer and see what kind of skills that Rosie does that we can do too. Remember, engineers try to solve problems. They brainstorm, make plans, and I have ideas. They experiment and try things and they make mistakes. They learn from their mistakes and they try something new. So let's see what we can find out about Rosie Revere. Let's see. Do, do, do. We're gonna go here, full screen, and let's see. Rosie Revere, Engineer, by Andrea Beatty, illustrated by David Roberts. Creatively read by Miss Jill. This is the story of Rosie Revere, who dreamed of becoming a great engineer. In Lilla Greer's class at Blue River Creek, young Rosie sat shyly, not daring to speak. But when no one saw her, she peeked in the trash for treasures to add to her engineer's stash. And late, late at night, Rosie rolled up her sleeves and built in her hideaway under the eaves. Alone in her attic, the moon high above, dear Rosie made gadgets and gizmos she loved. And when she grew sleepy, she hid her machines far under the bed where they'd never be seen. When Rosie was young, she had not been so shy. She worked with her hair swooped over one eye and made fine inventions for uncles and aunts a hot dog dispenser, and helium pants. The uncle she loved most was zookeeper Fred. She made him a hat to keep snakes off his head from parts of a fan and some cheddar cheese spray, which everyone knows keeps the pythons away. And when it was finished, young Rosie was proud, but Fred slapped his knee and he chuckled out loud. He laughed till he wheezed and his eyes filled with tears, all to the horror of Rosie Revere, who stood there embarrassed, perplexed, and dismayed. She looked at the cheese hat and then looked away. I love it, Fred hooted. Oh, truly I do. But Rosie Revere knew that couldn't be true. She stuck the cheese hat on the back of her shelf and after that day kept her dreams to herself. And that's how it went until one autumn day. Her oldest relation showed up for a stay. Her great-great-aunt Rose was a true dynamo who worked building airplanes a long time ago. She told rosy tales of things she had done and goals she had checked off her list one by one. She gave a sad smile as she looked to the sky. The only thrill left on my list is to fly. But time never lingers as long as it seems. I'll chalk that one up to an old lady's dreams. That night, Rosie lay wide-eyed in bed. A daring idea crept in her head. Could she build a gizmo to help her aunt fly? She looked at the cheese hat and said, No, not I. But questions are tricky and some hold on tight, and this one kept Rosie awake through the night. So when dawn approached and red streaks lit the sky, young Rosie knew just how to make her aunt fly. She worked and she worked till the day was half gone, then hauled her cheese copter out onto the lawn to give her invention a test and just to see how ridiculous a flop it might turned out to be. Strapped 
into the cockpit, she flipped on the switch. The Hello Cheese Copter sputtered and twitched. It floated a moment and whirled round and round and froze for a heartbeat, then crashed to the ground. Then Rosie heard laughter and turned round to see the old woman laughing and slapping her knee. She laughed till she wheezed and her eyes filled with tears, all to the horror of Rosie Revere, who thought, Oh, no, never, not ever again will I try to build something to sputter or spin or build with a lever, a switch or a gear, and never will I be a great engineer. Then she turned round to leave, but then great-great-aunt Rose grabbed hold of young Rosie and pulled her in close and hugged her and kissed her and started to cry. You did it! Hooray! It's the perfect first try. This great flop is over. It's time for the next. Young Rosie was baffled, embarrassed, perplexed. I failed, said dear Rosie. It's just made of trash. Didn't you see it? The cheese copter crashed. Yes, said her great aunt. It crashed. That's true. But first... It did just what it needed to do. Before it crashed, Rosie, before that, it flew. Your brilliant first flop was a raging success. Come on, let's get busy and on with the next. She handed a notebook to Rosie Revere, who smiled at her aunt as it all became clear. Life might have its failures, but this was not it. The only true failure comes if you quit. They worked till the sun sneaked away to its bed. Aunt Rose tied her handkerchief around Rosie's head and sent her to sleep with a smile ear to ear to dream of bold dreams of a great engineer. At Blue River Creek, all the kids in grade two built gizmos and gadgets and doohickeys, too. With each perfect failure, they all stand and cheer, but none quite as proudly as Rosie Revere. The end. And that is a great story about how we can take a challenge and work with it. And it doesn't always work out the first time, but we're going to try again, and we can learn what does work and what doesn't work. So in order to show that example, in your packet for STEM night, you'll have a page that looks like this. I color, I highlighted mine in um, dark marker so that I can see it better on the screen. But it is a Rosie copter. And what your job is, can you help Rosie Revere engineer a set of copter blades so she won't crash land? This is your challenge. So this is Rosie, Rosie's copter right here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut it out and we'll cut it out together. You can do it and you can replay this video or you can pause it and uh, catch up and then you can uh, continue on your own. All right, so. I cut out my rosy copter and you're like, that doesn't look like a copter, Miss Rich. Well, it doesn't yet, but now there's a dotted line. We're going to cut right up there through the middle like that. And we're gonna fold one of these forward and one backwards, okay? And when you hold it sideways, it'll look like a T. See that letter T? And then this little piece at the bottom is folded back. And our job is to see how long does it take to fall? Ooh, it spins pretty good. Let's see if we can try it again. Maybe I can count. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three. It made it three seconds before it landed on the floor. So let's see if you notice the other side of your sheet says 
This is a your copter. This side was Rosie's copter and this side is your copter. So what you're gonna do is you are going to think about some changes that you can make to those helicopter blades. What might make it go faster or slower? Do you think you should fold it? Add some holes to it? Maybe use a paper clip? Maybe weight it down with pennies? What do you think will make it go faster or slower? Right, think about those things. When you come up with an idea, then you can use this sheet that says design change. What changes do you think you want to try? Hmm, I think I might try, let me see, I might try to fold it differently. So I'm going to cut out my try. And you can cut out yours when you're ready. And then I'm gonna cut down the slice down the middle. I'm gonna fold one side forward and one side back. And what if I fold it zigzag? Do you think that will make it go faster or slower? Hmm, what do we think? Hmm. I'm gonna do this side zigzag too and see if it makes any difference. Do you remember how long my rosy copter stayed up in the air? It was just about three seconds. Let's see if this goes faster or slower. And we'll fold this back like that. Hmm, maybe I should make a slice in here too. One forward and one back. I'm thinking that maybe if I add some resistance to here and some zigzag, maybe it'll catch more air and fall to the ground more slowly. Let's see if we, we're gonna try it and see if it works. Ready? One, two, three. Oops, oh yeah, I forgot my Mississippi's and it got hung up. Okay, here we go. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three. It did, it seemed to spin faster. So now it's up to you. I wanna see what you can do. What This has spaces for one design change and then what happened and another design change and what happened next. So I'll write in there, hmm, folding them zigzag seemed to make it go faster instead of slower. So what design changes can you make and how will that change your STEM project? I hope you had fun doing our STEM activity today. And if I see you in the halls, I'm gonna check and see how it went. Bye, have a great day.